this channel we always do full disclosure I made a, made a bit of a, a bit of a boo boo so I'm gonna turn you around and show you what I need to do about it to fix it talked about my 100 mil I want from here to the top of my uh, nail caps so I always do now it looks like if you look at that it's 25 mil I think what I've done is I've added that on twice onto my post I've added worked my heights off from the floor I've added it on done it twice because that's 126 mil so that's what I've done because that's 25 so leads me on to a bit of a bit of a tip really and if you've got to cut something like this without so you don't wonder with your saw so you get your saw nice and square now I don't want to do it with the, the circular saw because it kicks too much dust everywhere so what I'm going to do is what I've done first done my mark and I run round all the way round with, with a sharp Stanley blade and my, uh, my little square so I've gone all the way round I've referenced one face every time that one and then every face and as it is it's gone straight back round there same place so then what you do is and uh, it's like a sharp chisel these are just me little side chisels I've got I've got a nice set of marbles but I, don't, I never get them out of the box they're all dusty now and then what you do is you um, you get this then and you take out a V up to that line all the way, oops, get me in shot, a V all the way across there like that and forms a shoulder for you to um, to sit your saw on in effect then and you get a nice crisp finish on your edge so I'll do that one of them and I'll show you what I mean okay so that's what that's what I mean then nice shoulder all the way around for you to uh, sit your saw on oh focus all the way around and then you can sit your hand saw on there now and then follow it all around it gives you inside gives you a nice crisp finish and it stops the fact that if you do happen to catch an edge it doesn't break the edge off as well which uh, yeah there we are little tip for you okay then this is all finished this one just been around starting doing the pellets and putting the uh lovely uh, pretty mignon caps on so now it's time to move on to the main rake stairs behind me and the controversial finish of it on the ceiling. Now, I'm expecting loads of comments, if I'm honest. Oh, it'd be nice to get loads of comments, but I'm expecting comments of uh, what have you done that for? Why do you make it look like that? That doesn't work like that, blah, blah, blah. Now, let me tell you, there's a couple of reasons. And the main one is, Yes, we know, and this has been deliberated multiple, multiple times, and I reckon two or three hours got into it. If we were to pull this landing back to here, so in effect, we'd have a step. So we'd have a wall across here, and then to this point, and then a return, and this bit, it's, this bit would stick out, then giving us, this wall would have then stepped that way, about 10 inches or so, and yes we could have gone to the newel post that comes as part of the stairs and yes this could have gone like that and up to that one yes but this landing is only i don't think it's 900 and it would look terrible and the decreased floor space upstairs now i won't go up and show you the space because you've seen it before but there's stuff in there now but what i can tell you is it's not a huge area in fact there we are what are we from here to that wall there that's about what it is and that is about three and a half meters but they've got a big bed and they've got stuff storage up there so it's not used so it would have taken too much off this room it would have ruined the landing it would have ruined the ceiling so this is why we're doing it we've done it a couple of times before we've discussed this with a customer and they're as happy as we are that this is the better option of the pulling this landing and having a, a step in your, in your ceiling it would look rubbish and then this wall step back and then centralizing your velox over your stairs no it's just no right, let's show you what i'm going to do then so what i will do is i've just got my bevel sliding bevel the old fashioned still got it you still got seat cut written on it look i used to use it for my uh, plum cut and seat cut i'm used to the old-fashioned way of doing it you got two of these and yeah you had to cut it by hand and yeah that's how old i am so all i do first is i put it on there and make sure that is right and then that because i know this is plumb vertical what uh yeah we had brick blaze well wide pick me up on my uh terminology of, of, of plumb level parallel whatever but you all know what i mean upright it is what it is isn't it 
uh, we don't use the correct terminology but uh, fair play to me putting me up on it so yeah there we are um, so I've checked that I know this is right so I can take that outside and cut my bevel on my um, on my, on my handrail with my saw and then because I'm gonna say I know this is level that then becomes the seat cut because I'll have plum cut there and that'll become the opposite cut which is a seat cut so I know once I've got that angle whatever that is that the remainder of that angle in 90 degrees let's say that's 40 degrees so I know then that 50 degrees is that cut up there that one on the top of the handrail but what I'm gonna to have to do with this is I'm gonna to have to cut it um, oversized run it into the side of it here and here to get a proper termination point up here because I haven't got the option here of of like I did downstairs where I can measure from here or put a spindle up to there I, I haven't really got that option so I'm going to struggle a little bit so I'll show you how I'm going to do that um, <laughs> I just got my uh, combination square again I know that this string is flat because I've checked it previously with my six foot level and there's no bow in it so I've followed it so I've then just got got a good centre try to get, get centre of my post best I can even though we know from previous footage that this stringer isn't centre of the post it's further to the left but um, I want to try and keep it as best centre of the post as I could when we start to get up that detail there so just set that I've used that then to put this I'll fix the bottom and then I've used my uh, 23 gauge pin and then to put a few pins all the way down just to hold it for me so I could then pre-drill and put all the screws in fix it all the way up so I shall go now and get my no I won't here it is what I'm going to do now is bit of an off cut off uh, handrail I know that's 900 off your nosing I was out of shot then 900 there off my nosing so I can put that there now I'll mark the underside of that where I know the spindle's going to go so that part down there well, now I'm going to go when I'm on my line and then I can get myself a spindle cut or two spindles cut for top and bottom then what I'm going to do I'm going to sit it on top of there parallel or upright level plumb whatever uh, on there as well up there to that point overcut a seat cut which we've already talked about and then I have to clamp it to there clamp it to there to make sure that I am exactly 900 level all the way up so I should do that uh, what I will do actually, I might, I'm going to have to fix that first because that was only temporary fix. So I shall get that fixed in, glued in, and, and fire the screws in properly, and then I shall uh, get this handrail cut. So bear with me, and I shall show you what we do with that. Okay, so I've cut my spindles by using this, marked on there, got a bit of a mark, and then cut it to that mark there. So that's in there like that. And then what I'm going to do is put that on there like that. Let me turn around so the light's not in front of it. And then what I've got to do is, as I said about this being my, in effect, my plum cut, or this is my seat, and that's but whatever, wherever you want to see, look at it. Um, that'll be on top of there like that. Ooh. That's not as tight as the others. So that's on top of there like that. And then I can plumb that, give myself a termination line up there. And then I can um, cut the, the, other, the opposite cut to this one on there as I said the seat cut and then I can find out exactly where this turn out give myself a length so I think I'll try that method I will leave it five mil big anyway and make sure I'm right but uh, that's what I'm going to do so there we are let's try that welcome back to a new day so likewise from before footage before um, it gets to the point in the day where it's not um, not feasible to, to, to film anymore because the little one's back from school and what have you so um, just to catch up on what we did we didn't miss much anyway uh, what I did do uh, I did set my handrail as I said did as I said as I said did that's not English is it um, I did set my handrail um, as I said I was going to with regards to the spindle with the off cut on top did all that I marked up there put a mark on that half and you're up there and then 
Again, like I said, I marked it about 10 mil big, actually. I did it just in case. And then I just took a little bit off, little bit off, and to be honest, it come back to my mark all by a millimetre. So that worked out. That was a good method. I remember that one. Um, I used to clamp it onto the onto the side of there, onto the side up there, and then mark it, sort of mark it down and mark it across. But I'd already checked this bottom angle. Um, I think I showed footage of it. If I didn't, the off cut that I showed you, I put that on the bottom first, put two, two spindles in here together and clamped them so they were tight. Sat my off cut on top and then scribed this in because this this post is a little bit twisted. Um, so I had to take a little bit more off this side. So anyway, that's what I did. So once that was done, I knew then the bottom cut was right and I could just get a measurement and didn't have to worry about both cuts, hence not having to do the old marking and what have you. So that seemed like a good method as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through how to set out the spindles on a rake. Now it's exactly the same as the straight, albeit you've got the um, the longer angle. If I've got a bit of a spindle here somewhere, I've just had it. Where did I put it? Anyway, oh here it is. So as you can imagine, that length now, when I did 41 mil before, when we were setting out the straight spindles, it's now an angle and it's 56, so it was on the other side, down the bottom anyway. So we'll go through that very quickly. They'll carry on. I shan't time lapse it because I've already time lapsed the other spindles and you probably don't want to see that. Um, so I'll, uh, I might stop halfway through when I get to the top part because I've got to rejig how I do it because I've got, it's so obviously angled, angled to straight there. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll carry on. And then the rest of the day, I will be spent for me putting fire doors on. We've got some lovely oak... Um, Oak grenade fire doors to put on. So that'd be nice. I'll set my hinge jig up and we'll we'll get that done as well. Right, I hope you can see me okay there. It's a bit difficult to get an angle here. But what I'm gonna do now is um, I've got a spindle off cut that when I cut my two spindles that you've already seen, um, and then I'm gonna put this um, down the bottom there, work my way up and get myself dimension. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself a measurement. And I think it was 1905, but let me just check. So check from the top there. Make sure you're right on the top. And you don't push your tape up the middle to get a false measurement. It was not that was oh that was the other one. It's uh, 2405. So right with 2405 there. And if we worked on uh, on this side, because this these treads are 250, if I worked on maybe two treads per step, roughly, uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, let's say 15. So if I first of all, then get my off cut a spindle, measure that. Uh, that is 55 mil this time. So it's 55 mil is my spindle. So then what I want to do, first measurement is, I'm going to do it, I haven't got my phone, my phone's over there, but, uh, but anyway, I'll do that in a minute. So you work that measurement out, and then as you did before, when you get that figure, you minus it from your 2,415. So in effect, you're minusing all the spindles, and then because I've gone for 15 spindles, you then divide the remaining figure. So 2,415 minus 15 um, times that dimension, so when you, whatever, let's say for argument's sake, you've got 1,800 left, as argument's sake. You then divide the remaining um, 1,800 by 16, because there's 16 spaces, because there's 15 of these. So as long as you then get, um, you'll then get a figure. What you can't do then is, is rely on that figure for your spacings between your spindles, because that measurement will be a diagonal measurement. Now, if you get anything at this point, if you get anything less than... Um, that less than 100, so if you get 60 or 70, then it's probably too much because you want the vertical measurement. So it's best to get yourself two of these or get the spindles back that you've already cut if you do it this method, like I do. Um, and then you can mark it on here, on there, like that, using this, and then get a measurement between your spindles. And you've got to remember you want a minimum of a uh, maximum, sorry, of 100 mil. You can't go any less than that. Now, We've got stop chamfered, so it's pretty much straight edges all the way around, apart from the very corners. Things to remember is if you've got um, a patterned spindle, um, so I, I don't know what all the spindles are called anymore, but it's a, it's a traditional one that's all turned. 
you need to go to the smallest point on that spindle and then measure that at 100 mil because what you don't want to do is measure it from square to square at the bottom and then when you get in the middle because of all the pattern that bit there is 120 because you won't pass if, well depending on your inspector you should know it's 100 mil but some of them don't unfortunately um, but you need to be 100 mil maximum it's all to do with um, children's heads and things that's what it's all about so let's do that I'll work my measurements out and then I'll put them on the screen in a minute what I've worked out uh, and then we'll go from there okay so as I was saying we're going setting your spindles out I've done I did 99 from here which is what the measurement was that the, you'd have seen the measurements on the screen already from there and I said to you, if it's below 100, it, it's pretty much guarantees that what's going to happen is, is this measurement is going to be too small. Or, I say not too small, um, you could afford to open it up a little bit. So this one, I think, was worked out at 70. 70, 72 nearly. Um, that's 99, but that's 72. But like I said to you, if I'm okay here, because ice is flat all the way up. But if you've got one that sort of comes in like this, you'd have to check here. So you'd have to get another spindle, not like I've got down there, my pattern one, not this one, to make sure that up here in the narrowest part is uh, less than 100. So I'm going to do a recalculation. I'm going to go for 14 spindles instead, recalculate that, and then that should then bring us to uh, a lot close to 100, because you don't want them too close, unless, of course, the design specified that then. Um, that, that's what you do, but uh, in this instance, the wider the better, really but no more than 100 mil. So I'll recalculate that, and then we'll carry on and get these spindles cut and fitted. So we're all cut ready. Got the uh, spaces cut. Ended up being uh, 121 mil for these at the end, uh, which gives me a gap between my spindles of about 92 mil. And the next one up was gonna be 110, so too wide. So we'll put these in now, and I'll show you in a bit where we are. Okay, we come to the point now where I've got to start uh, looking at this bit. So first thing I've done is I've put my standard packer in there, which is the same as all the others. And then I've filled that top bit in there with oak up to there. And my plan now is to um, go from this, I'll level up to there to get an exact point. And then what I'll do is I'll put an oak packer in between each of these then, a square at the top. And I'm going to have to adjust um, my pattern uh, and height to try and suit um, the, get the stop chamfered in. Now, I might have to do something a little bit unorthodox. Um, and I say unorthodox, you've just got to do what you've got to do. And I'm going to have to cut a spindle to try and get my pattern smaller, to try and tie it all in with here. But um, these are being painted. I mean, if it was oak, we'd just probably go to a certain point and then go with square. Um, or I'd just get my router out and uh, get square ones and then route this back in. But like I say, because it's being painted, um, I'm more than confident that I can uh, sit this back together and then fix it, pin it back together again, and it won't be seen once it's sanded. More than confident with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this out, like I say, by levelling up from that, level up to there, and then I know then that that distance, um, which I think is 91 mil, I think, um, I'll just get straight packers in at the top, 91 mil, cut out of oak, carry on with these packers on the bottom, and that should keep me level. Just going to quickly talk you through the process of doing this now. So first of all, I've obviously marked a line up there to get, my, get it all parallel and keep it all vertical. Then what I'm doing, I'm putting my spacer in, I'm putting an off-cut in there, making sure that's level. I'm then measuring from there, up to there to get a measurement and then adding on that by putting that on the end of a spindle. Um, I did that one exactly the same. I cut that one square, as you can see, and then I've just put my oak um, uh, packers up there and spacers up there. Worst case scenario, if the inspector does want an extra handrail on, we're either going to go for uh, a D handle there or uh, a bracket onto there up to that one. But we all know, and I know what people are going to think about that one, but we all know that that won't, if it does happen, 
what's going to happen when it's signed off. We all know that, don't we? So uh, that's a route we've already discussed with the customer. They wanted this rather than coming off the side and up and back in because it looked rubbish. So there we are. I shall finish this now and I'll show you when it's done. So I'm all finished. Just put the nil caps on. One's up there. Bit of a flat cap on that one. That one there, which came with the uh, stairs. And that's all finished up there. Like that, a bit of oak up there. Just needs a bit of cork across the top of that. And that's done. So there we are. Just need to, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to cut that off or put a little bit of a bit of pad in there. Not sure about that one there in the centre of shot. Might cut it off flush with the underside of this uh, base rail. Not sure yet. Depends what it look like when obviously the carpet goes on. So, yeah, it, this one's this one's a bit, uh, bit you know, outside the box, should we say? Um, but needs must. You just got to do um, what you can when we decide, and we as a collective, everybody in customer as well, that the whole roof space was just more important. Than, than that but yes I'm biased but that doesn't look out of place necessarily I don't think um, but of course that's my opinion isn't it um, and we're all entitled to one as long as it's uh, constructive should we say I'm not going to mention any more about the comments but there we go so let me just move my dust sheet off there see that is all done all the way down there then. that one down there as well is all finished all complete, no caps on. Uh, apart from the half newel, which is on the end of this wall, which is going to be plastered yet, so we won't do that. And of course, the half newel on there, but I can't find it, so I have to try and find that and uh, yeah, and do that one now before I forget. So, end of this series now. Don't know if it's been a two or three part, don't know how much footage I've got. So, uh, but for those of you that have watched it uh, and commented, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.